we are going to talk about gestalt psychology and how we can unleash the power of perception, not only in our own lives, but these we can use as principles in leadership, especially when it becomes giving ourselves the ability as a leader to grow, to learn. And when I say the word leader, I, I say this all the time. Every single one of you are leaders. Whether you have, whether you're a mother that has a child, you're a leader. Whether you have a, a partner, a spouse, you're a leader. If you're at work and there are those that are influenced by you, it does not just a title. It's not your job title. Everyone is a leader. You have the ability to learn leadership. And when you learn leadership and become more self-aware, guess is what's going to happen. More money is going to flow. Job titles will come. It works that way. Because majority of people do not practice leadership principles on a daily basis. Majority of people do not have a learning mindset. Majority of people are not learning self-awareness. You do those three things, I guarantee you'll set yourself apart from everyone else. So let's look at how we can apply Gestalt psychology principles. So what is Gestalt psychology? It was founded in the early 20th century by Max Wertheimer, Wolfgang Kohler, and Kurt Kafka. And it emphasized the idea that we perceive and make sense of the world through patterns and holistic principles. This is really cool, guys. We're going to get into this. So when we look at understanding human perception and cognition, it provides valuable insights for us as leaders who want to create cohesive, high-performing teams. And so we're going to explore for the next few minutes how applying Gestalt psychology principles in leadership will help you foster better communication, problem-solving, and team dynamics. So those are three things, three important principles, and, we're, and, and they have laws, like Gestalt psychology has laws. And so let's look at these, but, but I want you to filter them under communication, problem solving, and team dynamics. So the number one is the law of proximity. The law of proximity suggests that we perceive objects or elements that are close to each other as being part of a group. In leadership, this principle can be applied to create a sense of unity and collaboration within a team. So by physically positioning team members close to each other are creating opportunities for regular interaction Leaders can encourage communication and cooperation just by making sure you have proximity. Now, this is a great way to design office space. How, how do you have this law of proximity? How do you bring maybe having offices that are separate and individualized doesn't work for you? Maybe it's, it's more of, you know, being able to create that balance of having both, maybe just like a wall and then glass. Glass helps a lot. Um, creating um, a sense of unity and collaboration within the team. So what does that look like? So actionable tip, arrange team members' workspaces to facilitate interaction collaboration or establish regular team meetings and informal gatherings to strengthen interpersonal connections. Informal gatherings at work time is one of the most powerful things that you can do. Why? Because most workplaces don't have informal gatherings. There's no agenda. There's no agenda. It's just you catered lunch. You brought in some Chick-fil-A for 150 bucks. You brought in a couple pizzas for 100 bucks, And you're having an informal gathering for an hour. You have to focus on creating and strengthening interpersonal connections. So that's the law of proximity. The law of similarity. This is a really good one. The law of similarity states that we perceive objects or elements that share similar characteristics as belonging together. So in a team setting, emphasizing shared values, goals, and interests can create a sense of cohesion and belonging among team members. You need to have a philosophy. And I would encourage your team members to come up with a philosophy of the team. And you get, and this will train, you want to train leaders, leaders, you, you want to train everyone to be a leader. So you get, so here's how you do it. You get a team leader, you have them on their own, you're not involved in this, you have them on their own with their team, come up with a philosophy for the team. It creates a document, everyone signs it. This isn't a do or don't, or really, this is like generic, like what is, and let them come up with it. What's important to the team? 
and each team comes up with their own philosophy and that alone creating shared values that alone is going to cause each and every one to it's also a great filter because some people may not want to be a part of that team based off of the you know like and then you can let people know that when you're doing your coaching say hey this team would you like to be a part of this team here's their philosophy here's their goals here's their interest and this creates belonging and cohesion among the team members and it's also a great filter to keep people out that will destroy the team and google's done a great job if you type in google team um you're going to get so much information uh team systems wh whatever you want to type up if, if you want to and churches have done real good with this some churches some mega churches have done real good with this with cell groups is what they call them i, I think that's one of the missed opportunities in business is that we're not looking at these mega churches as a successful businesses take all the belief system out and everything else and see this amazing i've talked about this before how do you get people to volunteer how do you have, get thousands of people to do that every single week that's really hard and i think we could learn a lot about vision and motivation um shared values goals interests how how to speak that to others and being good leaders mega church pastors like i said take what they say out they're good leaders and, and you should read their books. I encourage you to do that, especially the ones that they are on lead, uh, leadership. And they have good podcasts too. Andy Stanley, Craig Goschel, um, both have really good leadership podcasts. So here's an actual tip for that. Clearly communicate your team's mission, values, and objectives and encourage team members to share their personal goals and passions. Encourage them. Celebrate the similarities and connections that emerge. That's your responsibility to create these connections and similarities and and you can do this in coaching you can do this in team member settings like rarely do you if, if you're a leader and you're a leader of teams rarely should you pop into the team meetings but you can occasionally let the team leader know and then have informal conversations like this you know like susan what's your personal goal what passion do you have and especially when somebody's new you know don't do the generic questions go online and, and ask dating questions. No, don't get too personal. But like, you know, you can find these really self-aware um, questions that you can ask somebody. Go through the list and make sure you find the appropriate ones. But you'll be shocked um, at the responses. And it's really, really cool how you'll see that energy flow and that synergy is what I like to call it amongst the team. So the next is the law of closure. The law of closure says that our minds naturally seek to complete incomplete patterns or information. So as a leader, this principle can be harnessed to encourage creative problem solving and innovation within a team. By presenting incomplete information or open-ended challenges, this is a, a freaking hack, guys. So you, you complete, you, this creates buy-in and ownership too when you have decentralized teams by presenting incomplete information or open in challenges leaders can inspire team members to collaborate and contribute their unique perspectives i always want to hear everyone's perspective i will do this on purpose so many times bring out some incomplete information and then ask a ton of questions here's an open-ended challenge hey we're in the c-suite meeting you know and i make sure that it's appropriate we're in the c-suite meeting and this is a problem that we're facing what do you think about this bill what do you think about this Teresa? what do you think about this susan Melissa, what would be your advice on this? I don't know how to get, gather the rest of the information on this. Is this something that you could just take on real quickly? Um, I, I need this, this, and this, and we're having a hard time gathering this information. I know you do a great job at this. Use people's strengths. Use their strengths to ask them to do a project and make sure it's you're giving them an open-ended challenge with incomplete information. And they it's, it's crossword puzzles. They will fill in the blanks. Actionable tip, present your team with open-ended challenge or questions and encourage brainstorming and collaboration to arrive at innovative solutions. Always will. Use first principles um, thinking. If you type in first principle, uh, you, you're going to see the podcast I've done. This is a few before this one. So if you stumbled across this one, if you go up, I think today is uh, March the 24th. So if you go, um, I think it's to like March the, the 20th or 19th. I don't know for sure, but you'll see I did first principles thinking uh, how to do that as a leader. Um, the law of continuity. The law of continuity is that we perceive elements arranged in a continuous line or pattern as being more related than those arranged randomly. I'm going to use an example of this 
That's why we love very simple menus. Um, when you go to in and out Burger, it's a one or a two, right? Single or a double. It makes our decision-making so simple. When you go to Baskin-Robbins and there's 50-something different styles of ice cream or you get overwhelmed like Cheesecake Factory and you go through and there's like so much on the menu, usually you'll default to your traditional order. Usually you'll order the same things over and over again when something gets confusing. So we don't like things arranged randomly. In leadership, the principle can be applied to help create a sense of direction and purpose within a team. By establishing clear goals and milestones, leaders can guide their teams towards a shared vision of success. I always make sure I get a clear goal and milestone. What is this? I always ask this question. What do you think time frame is on this? How difficult do you think this project's going to be? Who do you think needs to get involved in this? You know, it's just asking questions, guys. This is the coaching part. This is the actual leading, true leadership. So actionable tip, develop a roadmap for your team's projects or initiatives with clearly defined goals and milestones, regularly review progress, and adjust as needed to maintain a sense of continuity and direction. The word develop a roadmap doesn't mean you do it. It means you get together with your team or team leaders and you develop it together. Now, this one I can't, I don't know how to pronounce it right. Uh, the law of pragnanz, P-R-A-G-N-A-N-Z. Also known the law of simplicity or good figure. Proposes that our minds naturally seek to perceive patterns and shapes in the simplest and most stable form possible. In the context of leadership, this principle can be applied to streamline processes, communication, and decision-making within a team. So let me explain this to you. Review your team processes, communication channels, and decision-making structures. This is working on the business, not in the business. You need to free yourself from doing projects. You need to free yourself from doing tasks. You should be looking at processes and systems and structures and what channels are going on and how you can make that better. This is, this is leadership 3.0. And you need to graduate away from doing things for people and micromanaging, because that's what most managers and leaders do is they micromanage. I would say 99.9% micromanages and 90% of them think that they don't. This is why they feel burnout and their capacity to lead. Your lead should be able to scale. Your leadership should be able to scale. If you're not scaling your leadership on a monthly, quarterly, and yearly basis where you can lead more and more and more people and take on more and more responsibilities, then you've capped yourself. You have capped yourself. You've developed a scarcity mindset instead of an abundance mindset. You've also tapped yourself out for the amount of work that you can think that you can consciously do and you feel like and it's narcissistic and i've said this before you feel like you're the only one that can do it it's not true you have people waiting to unlock their imagination waiting to unlock their creativity waiting to unlock them being happy and successful and fulfilled at their work because they're taking ownership of what they're doing and they feel like they're a part of the organization the only way you create that is by working on the business, not in the business. Michael Gerber had some really good books on this um, as far as systems, and I encourage you to develop a system mindset. Um, and, and I'll do some podcasts on that book. Simplify and streamline where possible to promote clarity, understanding, and productivity. This just isn't just a ROI, CFO, um, financial thing. Let, let's streamline. When we think of streamline, we think of money and dollars. That's not true. Those organic, all... Money issues, budget issues, um, growth issues, all of that take care of itself organically when you begin to have proper leadership. Everything rises, John Maxwell's quote, my favorite, everything rises and falls on leadership. Simplify and streamline where possible because you want to always promote clarity, understanding, and productivity. I will ask people, how do, we, how do you think we get clear on this? And they may stumble around, but they're going to, and you know, how, how could we bring clarity to the team on this? Just asking questions, letting people come up with the answers. I don't need to have all the answers. I just need to facilitate creativity. I need to facilitate imagination. I need to facilitate um, happy, kind, and loving people. And if I love those around me and I'm developing leadership inside each and every one of them, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to have a productive, growing, ROI-based 
My ROI is going to be 10x. So Gestalt Psychology Principles, in closing, provides valuable insights into human perception and cognition. And I believe it can be leveraged to enhance leadership effectiveness. By applying the laws of proximity, similarity, closure, continuity, prognos, and team management, leaders can foster better communication, collaboration, problem solving, and overall team dynamics. And by understanding and harnessing these principles, leaders can create an environment where individuals work together harmoniously, driving collective collective success and growth. That's what all of us want. Sounds like a, a, a pipe dream, doesn't it? Sounds like you're living in some you know, failed utopia that, you know, I don't think that could actually work. Try it. Begin to take these principles and these laws and put them into place. And I think this is another way, another approach of something that we can learn. Write these down. Listen to this podcast again and, and write down these. Go online, type in Gestalt Psychology. Um, you can get a Gestalt Psychology book on eBay in great condition used for $4.99 with free shipping. You know why? Because I've done it. And I've gotten these books for other people. If you're not using eBay to buy books, you, you can buy used books with free shipping. Goodwill posts, you know, hundreds of thousands of books on there. There's there's all kinds of book providers. You can There's a filter, give you a little quick hack. You type in like new or very good. And then filters, like new, very good, used books, and then free shipping. Click on those filters and then type in whatever you want. Type in consult psychology, type in leadership, type in self-awareness, type in consciousness, what, whatever, whatever team building, John Maxwell, whatever you want. And you type it in there and you can see it. You can save the search too. And then it'll always email you um, when new products arrive in that. And I used it all the time, every single day. And that's how I buy my books majority of the time, unless I want to get it on Kindle so I can do a lot of highlights and I'll go over my books my book process, my buying process, my highlighting process, and um, how I study books and how I go over this and how I come up with this material for you guys every single day. So have an amazing weekend. Work on your leadership every single day and be a self-aware leader. Thank you for joining us on the Albuquerque Business Podcast. And thanks to our sponsor, RigbyDigital.com. Make sure to subscribe and share. And go to ABQPodcast.com. Get show notes, resources, and links to everything we talked about today to help you navigate your journey as an entrepreneur and business owner.